there is no need to wait for the next war to start preventing it. Sometimes you have to identify with entry points and trade is one example that can help the sites to start moving forward to prevent <laughs> some sort of, you know, military activities. So Abkhazia is one of two breakaway regions in Georgia. It has been mainly on its own for almost 30 years. Georgia went with war to Abkhazia in the beginning of the 90s when uh, the Soviet Union has been collapsing and uh, tens of thousands of people died and hundreds of thousands became displaced after that. Uh, in 2008, Russia recognized Abkhazia as an independent state, but very few in the world followed the case. And one of the results of this is that there is very little contact between those who continue living inside Abkhazia and those in uh, proper Georgia. And uh, that uh, unfortunately contributes to the fact that people know very little uh, about each other, but uh, even more, those who are taking the decisions on both sides, they have very little understanding of each other's interests often, you know, and also the realities on the ground. What uh, makes Crisis Group different from, for example, diplomats, is that we are trying to reach out to people from uh, different sides. We not only speak to the officials who are, for example, directly engaged in the negotiations or just diplomats, you know, who are kind of uh, mediating the process. What we actually did is we uh, traveled to, to the conflict zone itself. So it was uh, August 2017 and uh, I got my permission to travel to Abkhazia. Uh, it was so hot, but I still kind of, you know, made uh, <laughs> my way to this breakaway region. Uh, went through with crossing points, checkpoints, che got checked by all the military. I travel to some outskirts of Suhumi, and uh, suddenly I'm seeing like a guy who is uh, walking into the uh, office in his flip-flops, and uh, he um, he shakes my hand, and I learned that he's one of the richest people in Abkhazia, <laughs> just because he has been doing trade for almost half of his life. So we started discussing what were the main problems of uh, doing trade with their de facto neighbors, uh, ethnic Georgians from Georgia proper. And I was able to take their concerns to discuss them in my conversations with the de facto officials. So in this particular case, uh, I can tell you that there were very few who really kind of wanted to discuss things in, 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 in detail. I think one of the main reasons for that is because uh, in uh, protracted conflicts like Abkhazia, for example, people tend to think big, unfortunately. You know, sometimes you have to identify with entry points and trade is one example that can help the sites to start moving forward in this particular case, our main goal was, uh, in fact, to demonstrate how potential cooperation can uh, help to increase interdependence and potentially prevent new military activities. After several years, I can tell you that there are very few who have any doubt that trade is something that uh, should be discussed in the context of Abkhazia conflict. Um, you can see not just uh, some diplomats, uh, but also some uh, officials, uh, you know, and politicians who call uh, for the development of, of the trade between the breakaway region and Georgia proper. One of the leaders uh, in Abkhazia, when he came to power, this was the first thing that he said in 2019, that you know, we need uh, trade talks, we want trade. The impact from our side is that crisis group was able uh, to contribute to the discussions that can, in longer term, pave the way for for example, more reconciliation, more cooperation between the sides. And that came 
not just from talking to people in their beautiful offices or with uh, um, some very uh, high-level diplomats that mainly came from the conversations with those who uh, do daily work on trade and work in flip-flops. <laughs>